Well, hey, everybody. Oh, recording in progress. Okay, hey, everybody. Welcome back to our normal Monday night spot here in the Michaels Community Classroom. We're happy to be here. And um, tonight we have a fun painting that Emma is going to be teaching called Floral Fright. It's great pumpkin painting with a cool floral background. So it's gonna be lots of fun. Um, as Ash mentioned, I think if, for those of you who are new, if the pace of the class is going just a little bit fast or you find that you'd rather just watch tonight and then go back and watch the recording and that way paint at your own pace where you can pause and rewind and do all that great stuff, that's great. If you wanna paint along with us, we love that too. So it's totally up to you. And um, you know, as we're going, we'll take breaks here and there to let people catch up if we need to and all that fun stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and hand it over to our instructor tonight, who is Emma. Thanks, John. Uh, hey, everybody. Happy Monday night paint night. Um, welcome. I'm so glad you decided to join me tonight and paint floral, floral fright alongside me. I'm super excited for this one tonight. It's going to be a fun little quirky whimsical fall painting for Halloween that is fast around the corner. So like always, I'm just going to go ahead and start by explaining all the different materials um, that you'll need tonight if you're crafting along with me tonight. So first, you're going to need a stretched canvas. I listed a 10 by 10 canvas in the description for this class, but really you can have any size canvas you want. Um, the great thing about this uh, pumpkin that we're painting tonight is that um, it's, you know, it's a uh, the scale of it is a lot different than the rest of the canvas. So it kind of makes it unique. So you get to make your pumpkin as big or as little if you want. So you get to be creative. Um, but I chose a 10 by 10 canvas because I like the way that the positioning is for this. Take out your canvas. Next, you're going to want, of course, your lovely folk art paint. So tonight we're using um, titanium white, but any white will work fine. Navy blue, any dark colored blue will be fine. Um, lavender, any medium color purple will be okay. And then um, we have folk art dragonfly top hook top coat glaze, which I'm super excited to talk more about later. Um, I think it comes in five different varieties at Michael's. Um, so tonight we're using the red violet blue shift and it is a really, really beautiful uh, top coat that we're gonna, I hope you guys can see that, that we're gonna add to our pumpkin and the corners of our painting tonight. So I'm so excited to show you guys that. We got our paint, we got our canvas. I always like to have a water basin, some paper towels, my blow dryer, because um, we just like to keep things going so that you guys don't get bored when we're painting in our paint nights. And then a selection of brushes. Um, I like to have a selection of flat brushes. So tonight um, we're mainly gonna be using um, about you know a one inch flat brush, a half inch flat brush, maybe like a quarter inch flat brush and a small liner brush. But if you have a selection of flat brushes, you'll be totally fine to paint alongside me and a pencil. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that we're going to do tonight is we're going to, oh, I wanted to mention to you before we get really started. Um, so if you have taken a trip to Michael's or you just gone online on michaels.com, then you may have noticed that your folk art paint looks a little bit different than it used to. And that's because we've just had a label change. So it's the great, it's the same great folk art paint that we all know and love. It just looks a little bit different. So this is the old label. And then this is the new label. So same great paint, just a different look to it. Okay, so let's get started for real now. So you're going to take your white and apply some directly whoop, and apply some directly onto your canvas or not canvas, I'm sorry, palette. And then you're going to take your lavender. So let's say we put like a two quarter size um, amount of paint onto our palette. We're going to probably half that with our lavender. We're trying to lighten up our purple color. And now we're just gonna mix it really well. And like always, if you want something to be cleared up, that's a lot of paint. If you want something to be cleared up in the chat um, or you have any questions or comments throughout our little class tonight, then make sure to post them in the comments and John can relay those over to me. Absolutely. All right, so right now we are working with our half inch flat brush. And what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that, um, so this is, you can see here, this is way too much paint on my brush right now. And that's because we just mixed our paint with our brush. So I'm gonna offload that, which means just removing some of my paint 
onto a paper towel until we get, still too much, until we get about that much paint. You see that? And now what we're gonna do is we're going to make large, loose, super loose circles all over our canvas. And this is um, gonna be the first steps to building our floral background. So the reason we don't want way too much paint on our canvas is because we want that really loose kind of feathered edge to our circles. And I'll show you guys what I mean. You see that? So we want our uh, circles to be really, really loose. The looser they are, the better our painting will look. We definitely do not want perfection in our painting tonight. And I like to kind of butt up my circles, you know, pretty close next to each other because I don't want too much of that negative white space. I just want my background to look super duper full. And if you find that there is quite a bit of white space right now, um, don't worry about it so much right now because we can always go back and fill it in with some more color later. Just get them as close as you can and pick up more paint as you need it. And we wanna make sure that we um, add some circles that are kind of falling off of our side of our canvas. So that it looks more organic. Have to do that. And as you can see, I'm just kind of starting it up a little bit more. I'm starting in the middle of my circle and I'm just kind of swirling out. And another great thing about this painting tonight is if purple is really not your thing, you could do this with uh, orange flowers and still be super Halloween-y. You can do it with green flowers, with blue flowers, pink flowers, whatever you want. And so when you get to these sides too, I'll show you, instead of going in a circular motion, sometimes that's a little bit tricky on the sides, if you want to just kind of swing back and forth like this, like a pendulum, that'll achieve the same effect. And so the um, real trick is, but the reason we're starting in the center, once we reapply paint to our brush and then working outwards is that by the time we do work outwards, there's going to be less and less paint on our brush. And so we get that really, you know, nice feathered effect on the edges that we're looking for. All right, you guys, so once your canvas looks like mine, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna rinse our brush in our water basin. And once you're done, um, we're gonna go ahead and grab our blow dryers and go ahead and blow dry our canvas real quick. All righty, super quick, should be dry now. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and apply some more lavender onto our palette. Okay. So now we're gonna take a smaller flat brush, something like this size, should come in your artist variety pack that I listed in the supplies. And we're gonna go in and we're going to apply some of our lavender to our brush, kind of offload it a little bit, really focusing on getting you know, the paint um, on the end of our brush. Not so much covering all of the bristles in the brush, but just at the end here, you guys can see that. 
And then what we're going to do is we're going to hold our brush pair or sorry, I would say that perpendicular to our canvas and we're going to make little C strokes. Reapplying more paint as we need it. Like that. Okay. So we're going to do that inside of our circles on the outside of our circles. We're just making loose little C strokes. And then as we get towards our center, we are going to make them a little bit smaller and then make them longer on the outside of our circles, smaller going in. And so another thing that always helps me when I'm doing stuff like this, I don't wanna put my C uh, strokes in a row, like in a line. I like to make sure that they're alternated. So if I see that this line ends here, I'm not gonna start my, my next inward circle right up against where this one ended because I like a little bit of the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Differ. What? <laughs> it's been a long day. What's the word I'm looking for? I don't want them to all look the same. <laughs> you want each one to look unique, maybe? Maybe. Or that could possibly be it. Who knows? You don't want them to look, I don't know. <laughs> I want some variation. Variation is the word. I'm there you sure. go. Oh, people are all kinds of people are random and natural variation. How about that? You want some variation? Variation. Thank you, guys. You guys always yes. have my back. I tell you, it's been a long day, you guys. That's but Mary L from Red Sox Nation of Rhode Island. Go Sox. Mary L, you're the best. Mm -hmm. um, I hope that if you guys have also experienced a long day, the same, I, the same that I had, um, that you are able to find some relaxation into night. <laughs> okay, so we're just going to keep doing those C strokes inside, lots and lots of variation. I'm going to start bringing a, like my dictionary and thesaurus to paint night. We're going to give everyone time to catch up on their painting while Emma looks up words in her thesaurus. <laughs> <laughs> How is everybody doing on their pace, by the way? Are we doing okay? Everyone keeping up so far? So good? Okay. Are we good, John? I think we're good. I think everyone's good. doing all right. I can see lots of people painting when I it's scroll good. through the. Makes me happy. Through the feed, which is good. And um, I should have said this too, but if you are more comfortable working with like a liner brush or a round brush to do strokes like this, by all means, feel free to pick that up. But I just feel most comfortable um, using my flat brush, my small flat brush and holding it perpendicular to my canvas. I feel like uh, this painting more so than a lot of other paint nights we've done recently is super relaxing. A lot of the steps are pretty repetitive. It's almost kind of like a paint by numbers. Like once you start it and you start to practice it, you really get the hang of it and the better it looks. So I hope that you guys uh, find that to be true as well tonight. Let us know in the comments, you guys, if you're able to chat right now. I would love to know if anyone's making any homemade Halloween costumes this year. Hmm. Adley is. 
Love it. Love it. I don't know what, but. No, let us know. What are you going to be for Halloween, Emma? At work, we're doing a little bit of gender bending. So we're going to be the Adams family. Oh, I, I like I don't it. know if I'm spoiling the supplies or the, su the surprise to uh, like a hundred people right now. But Jesse, mm. you guys know Jesse from existing paint nights. She's going to be um, Gomez Adams from the Adams family. <laughs> and I'm going to be Pugsley Adams. And then That's two of our other coworkers who are um, males are going to be Morticia on Wednesday. So that's going to be fun. I love it. <laughs> that I is so cool. Guys. I love that <laughs> idea. <laughs> Thank you. It'll be fun. The craft department goes hard for Halloween, as you all can imagine. Bridget is making an Ursula costume to go with her daughter's Ariel. I love that. Let me know what you're using for the tentacles. Um, my si uh, Jesse, who now you know is my sister, um, who does paint nights as well. She was Ursula one year, and she made tentacles out of pool noodles and wire. Mm, that's a lot. It is a lot. But she's a she's a very crafty gal, as you all know. She's very talented. Okay, so once you are pleased with all of your C strokes um, and your painting is looking a little bit similar to mine, how mine is right now, we're gonna go back and we're gonna fill in some of the white space with our uh, lightened lavender color that we did our circles with. And we're gonna go ahead and just apply a few more C strokes to some of that white space. You see how this looks way more full and like an actual pattern compared to this one. So we're gonna go back in with our light lavender. And we can be um, a little bit, um, when we apply our strokes, we can apply a little bit uh, thicker of strokes. To kind of fill in that white space. And if you're overlapping some of the C strokes that you made previously, that's all right. You can always go over them again. Don't worry about it too much. So the more you fill in your C strokes with your light purple color, um, the more condensed your pattern is going to look. Okay, once you're pleased, go ahead and rinse your brush again. Now we are going to apply some white to our palette. And you guys guessed it. We're going to go ahead and do that with our white. You guys are pros at this now. So with your white, make those C-stroke patterns again all over your sweet little flowers. And do we have any questions or comments so far, John, that you'd like to share? Um, let's see. Franny was saying, I can see this floral pattern being a base for other seasonal paintings too. Love it so much. Awesome. Jackie was asking if we can have a minute to catch up. So we, we will we'll give everybody a minute once we... Get, once we just get going on these flowers, get these finished, and then we'll see how everyone's doing. We can maybe give folks a minute to catch up. Sounds great. And the great thing, you know, I, I've said this before in this class, you guys already know, but a lot of this painting tonight is fairly repetitive. So once you get the hang of one step, um, you can kind of, you know, you kind of get the gist of it, which is good. 
but I understand you'll want to catch up before we do our pumpkin tonight. You could even do this pattern with just a couple of flowers and make you not make it a pattern, but just like a little bouquet. That would be super pretty and do some fall florals. That would be so pretty. So it's a neat little way to paint some really loose florals. It's relaxing too. And I feel like the more um, dimension you get in this with the darker purple and the lighter purple and the white, it almost kind of pops off the canvas. Emma, somebody was asking if, what other colors do you suggest to offer like good dark light contrast like this, like for yeah. the purple? So um, if you wanted to totally, obviously this is like a monotone palette or a monochromatic palette that we're working with. So it's lots of different purples, blues would be beautiful. Um, even if you wanted to do like a light blue um, base instead of our light purple and then do like a dark blue sea strokes and white or gray, um, some burgundy would be beautiful and still keeping with that really fall theme some orange, I think we said that earlier, even some green to keep it a little bit spooky. I mean, honestly, even black, that would be really pretty too. Do a gray background with um, your black and white accents on top, that oh, would be yeah. stunning. Cool. All right, so now I think I am pleased with my background. So if you weren't pleased with your background right now, you can always go ahead and fill some more of that white space with your light purple. Um, you can add some more white, add some more dark purple, totally up to you. But I think um, I'm finished with my background. So I'm gonna go ahead and rinse my brush. And um, while you guys kind of take a minute to catch up with me, I'm gonna go ahead and blow dry my, uh, my painting. Lock it in place. All right, you guys, I hope you're all caught up. How does everyone look out there, John? Um, I think everyone's doing okay. How are we doing, everybody? A lot of people are still painting, so maybe just a minute. Okay. Um, if you guys don't know, we have a really awesome Facebook group called Let's Paint with Plaid. Um, oh, yeah, and, we do. yeah, and it is filled with artists at all different levels, um, beginners, people have, that have been painting for like 30 plus years, um, lots of different skill levels, and they're all so supportive of each other. And Andy Jones, one of our, um, who, who paints a lot of Monday nights with us on Michaels, he's our content editor at Plaid and he does lunch and learns uh, twice a week um, and shares a lot of tips and tricks and techniques and really awesome skills. And it's all for free. Um, and the great part about the whole group though, is really the community. And so if you um, wanna join, a lot of people post their Monday night Michael's paintings on that group and everyone can comment on them. I'm always looking at those. Jesse's always looking at those. Of course, Andy, Chris Williams, Kirsten Jones, we're all looking at all those paintings. We can actually comment on your paintings and um, like them. And it's a really supportive group. So I recommend that you guys all check that out on Facebook if you haven't already and see what it's all about. Yep, I'm gonna post the link to it right now. Okay, 
And while John's doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and um, start the next step of our painting. So now is when we're gonna break out our pencil. And the first thing we're gonna do is we are gonna start by creating a, a little cute oval and our oval is gonna be a little bit pointed at the top. So we're kind of trying to make this shape kind of like a rounded diamond almost, which is just an oval, but it's gonna be pointed at the, at the top, okay? And I'll show you what I mean because I'm probably making no sense. And you might kind of have to uh, go a little bit back and forth with your pencil because our background is a little bit busy right now, which I love, but it might be a little bit tricky to see. So just kind of go over. We're going to cover all this pencil, so don't worry about it not being able to be erased later. And we're going to make that shape. Can you guys see that okay? Yep. Just kind of that center section. Yep of the pumpkin. What we're doing is we're creating this shape right here with our pencil. Okay. Hold it and up now, one more time so we can see Emma real close. Sure, yeah. There we go. Everybody got it? Good. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create, I'll show you guys this, cause this is really what we're, the shape we're trying to make. We're going to make the next little slices of our pumpkin, the next curves. And so we're going to start at the top of our oval and we are going to kind of go down and get a little bit fatter at the end here. Okay. So it's going to start out a little bit skinny at the top and then it's going to get a little bit fatter as we come towards the bottom. And we're going to just connect it right at the bottom there. You see that? And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. And of course, we always like to use a pencil because the great thing is, if you don't like the way it looks, you can always go ahead and erase it or paint right over it. Okay, so now you, you have, should have three sections, a big section in the middle and then two smaller sections on either side. So um, we're gonna make two more strokes in our pumpkin. And these are gonna be the thinnest ones so far. So even thinner than the ones that we just did. And we're gonna be, again, starting at the top. Thin, thin, thin. And instead of ending it at the bottom of our oval that we did initially, we are going to cut a little bit shorter of that. Okay, see that? All right, now lastly, we're gonna do these two outer sections. So this is gonna be, um, instead of like having a, you know, a, a thinner size on top and then kind of billowing out at the bottom, it's gonna be pretty equal, the width of it all the way down. And we're gonna start at the very tippy top. And instead of coming down right away, we're kind of gonna go outwards a little bit. Does that make sense? And this is gonna be the fattest one. And we are gonna connect it to the rest of our pumpkin at the bottom. And maybe a little bit even higher at the top. We want to get some volume. We want our pumpkin to look plump. Beautiful. All right, you guys. So now we're gonna go ahead, and since we're already sketching, we're gonna go ahead and sketch out our little pumpkin stem. So I'll hold it up closer so you guys can see. We're gonna start a little bit left of the center. We're gonna come up straight across and then come back down and make this shape. You see that? Little stem shape, nothing's fancy. Okay. So 
So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna um, introduce our navy blue to the palette. Gonna put it on our palette. And right now it's a little bit dark. So we're gonna take a little dollop of our navy blue and introduce a tiny, tiny bit of white just to lighten that color up a bit. And we're gonna mix those together. Gosh, this navy is so pretty. And we're gonna fill in our middle shape with it. So I like to, again, use my full surprise. I like to use my flat brush and um, hold it perpendicular to my canvas. to create those really sharp lines. But if you feel more comfortable using a round brush or a liner brush, please feel free to do that as well. And I always say, um, make the canvas work for you. Don't work for the canvas. So flip that canvas around if it makes it easier for yourself. You already went ahead and sketched out those shapes. So you don't really have to worry about um, making the shapes look a little wonky and the perspective a little weird because you already sketched it out. So you don't have to worry about not looking at it sh from straight on. Beautiful. We're just kind of cleaning up those lines. So pretty, okay. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to take our white and we're not gonna rinse our brush. We're gonna add a tiny, tiny bit of navy. Gonna dip just to really the end of our brush in our navy. And we're gonna mix together until we get a really pretty light blue color. And this is gonna be the lightest color, colored section on our pumpkin. And we're gonna do the same thing filling in our shape. Again, we're using the tip of our flat brush, holding it perpendicular to create those really sharp, clean lines. And it's okay if your dark blue kind of mixes in with your lighter blue as you are kind of brushing right up against your dark blue, because I think that them blending together uh, kind of gives your pumpkin a little bit more character and it's not so solid. You get kind of, you see here, that's what happened with my initial pumpkin and you got some of those streaks of darker blue and lighter blue in the different sections and it just made it look more painterly. Okay, so now we are going to go ahead with our white again. And this one is gonna be a little bit more 50-50 with our navy and our white, a little bit leaning more towards the white, okay? So as you guys can see, we're really just creating different tones of our navy blue, okay? Going for this really cute monochromatic look. So we just want it to be darker than the color we were just working with, but obviously not so dark as the color in the middle. Is everyone good so far, John? Anybody have any questions or any, need any? No, we haven't had any questions. I can see lots of painting happening, so I think we're good. Good. All right, same thing, guys. Just fill in that space on our pumpkin.
Okay, and then finally, we are going to go in with the outer layer. And to do that, you can see we have two different tones. So we're gonna go back to the lightest color that we had before. Um, but before we do that, we're gonna work on our right side and we're gonna take the color that we just did, the closest to the outside so far, and we're gonna add a little dollop of our navy, a little bit more navy into that. So we don't want it to be quite as dark as our center color, but we want it to be darker than the color that we just did. So just keep adding navy until it has a happy medium between those two colors. And that's looking good. You guys can see that on my palette. And if you find that you have way too much paint on your brush, um, which you probably will, if you're a little bit of a mix, uh, messy mixer like me, then go ahead and just offload that on your paper towel and go on your right side and add that darker blue. And sometimes you um, add a new color and you say, eh, that might be needs a little bit more navy or hey, that maybe needs a little bit more white. And that's totally okay. All you need to do is go back to your palette, mix a little bit more of that color into the color that you're working with, and then go ahead um, and, and paint over it. Okay, then go back, reanimate your paint with a little bit, touch of water if you need to. And uh, fill in that shape to your left. Emma, so Kat said, is there a purpose to the various shades of blue or could you use any alternate colors or shades of blue? That's a great question. Um, you can really use any alternate shades of blue. You can use uh, paler blue in the center and then go darker as you come out. This is just the way that I wanted to do it for this painting tonight, but I'm so glad you asked that question because it's really up to you. Um, like we said, like this pumpkin, it's so fun because you get to be so creative with it. You can paint this a thousand times and paint uh, with a different color scheme each time. You can, the variation of your colors can change, um, you know, however you like it. So that's the great thing really. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna rinse our brush. You could think about where your light source is coming from. So you could have your light on one side and your darker colors on the other, or if the light's coming from the front, it gets darker as it goes around. Absolutely. But um, as you can see, my pumpkin is not so realistic. It's just a little bit whimsical, which I like, and I think is perfect for Halloween. So it's totally up to you, whatever you wanna do. So once your brush is nice and clean, we're gonna do a little bit of dry brushing. So um, we are going to, for, so you see we have obviously some lighter blues and with those lighter blues, we are going to use some of the darker blues and start from the bottom with our dry brush. I might even switch out for really dry brush and kind of perpendicularly again, make some loose little uh, swivel strokes coming up from the bottom of our pumpkin and kind of dry brush it just to give it a little bit more dimension. Like you see on here, we have some spots like that. We're gonna add a little bit of that now. And what I wanna do is I really want to have some, um, so like for example, if I'm gonna start with this guy, I'm gonna just really try to find a color that's near to it. So I would maybe go for this lighter color. That's not quite as dark as that, but it is the darkest one that I have on my palette. Does that make sense? And I'm just kind of gonna, with the dry brush, so only really at the bottom, kind of work my way up, creating that texture. Does that make sense? And we're gonna do that. So picking a color that's really similar to the color that we're working on, we're gonna do that dry brush technique going up to add some dimension. Do I sound like a, do I sound like I'm making sense, John? It makes sense. I think so. Yeah. Okay.
and we really want to make sure that our brush is super dry when we create this texture. We do not, we want barely any paint on our brush because we don't want to be like adding a whole lot of color and changing the color of the sections of our pumpkin. We just want to add like a little whisper of detail towards the bottom just to give our painting a little bit more interest. We want to have barely any paint on there when we do this. Okay. All right, and then you should end up with something like this. See, just a little whisper of texture. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our, we are going to take our plain old navy without any other colors mixed in. And we're gonna go ahead and fill in the shape of our stem. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we are gonna take the same navy that we just used and we're going to add these um, little lines, just following the big sections of color that we painted, okay? So we don't want to create a um, continuous straight line all the way down. We're just gonna, as we go down, pick up our brush and then put it back down, pick up our brush. Cause we don't, I don't wanna, I mean, you can totally have this if that's what you prefer, but we really don't want those continuous lines, okay? We want kind of alternating lines. And as you can see later, we're gonna add some white, but right now we're just gonna go ahead and do this with the navy. And this is like really going to make our pumpkin pop. And same thing as we did with our little sea strokes with our um, flowers earlier. We want to make sure that those lines are alternating. We don't want them sitting in a row because that's gonna look like it's manufactured. It won't look natural, which is what we want, of course. And we want really thin lines. Okay, and once you've added some outlines on your, with your navy, we're gonna go ahead and rinse our brush and do the same thing with white. I'm gonna add a little bit more white to my palette. And so um, as you can see in my original painting, um, sometimes I like to butt up my white against my navy on these outside lines. I think that looks really nice, but it's up to you. You see how they're kind of, you know, almost like a relay race, like where one start stops, another one starts, but they kind of overlap for a minute. Um, someone was asking, what are you using for a palette? So I'm using an oversized piece of palette paper, and that is really um, keeping my workspace from being super messy, and it's acting as my palette. Yeah. But you can use, yeah, just a regular piece of palette paper. You can use a piece of wax paper. And Michael's does have a great 
selection of palette paper. It's one of those questions that kind of comes up frequently on these paint nights, because I'm not sure that people even know that's a thing, but it comes in a pad and it, you can either get like an eight and a half by 11 size, or you can get a much larger piece like Emma has. So I recommend picking that up if you're going to be doing some painting. Absolutely. Okay, so to end up with something like that, and once we have white on our brush still, what I want to do is I want to, um, first of all, I'm going to offload my brush again so that there's really barely any paint on my brush. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, um, on the left corner of my stem here, I'm just going to kind of go ahead back and forth with barely any white paint and kind of go back and forth like this. I hope you guys can see that. Back and forth like this, and then kind of back and forth like this, okay? Just creating a little bit of a highlight here, adding more white paint as we need it. Okay. So we get something that looks like that. A little bit of highlight. And I'm gonna rinse my brush. Now, I'm gonna go in to my navy, offload a tiny bit, and I'm gonna create this line kind of acting as our, like not a horizon line, but it's acting as the line that our pumpkin is sitting on. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna really lightly, I don't want a really um, hard grip on my paintbrush. I just wanna hold it pretty loosely and I'm just gonna create this line here with not a lot of paint on my brush. And I'm gonna create this line right here. Okay, now I'm gonna put a little bit of water on my brush with my navy still on it. I'm gonna offload a little bit, actually a lot of it, so that it really almost looks like a watercolor on your palette. And then I'm gonna do the same thing, but instead of with the edge of my brush, I'm gonna use the full face of my brush and going a little bit thinner and then coming down. So you get something like this. So almost like kind of a V. All right. Like that. Okay, kind of creating a little bit of a shadow almost. And now you guys, if you feel like your painting is dry, then you're ready for our finishing touch with our beautiful folk art dragonfly glaze. But if you feel like it's not dry, then obviously go ahead and hit it with a blow dryer. But I'm gonna go ahead and apply my dragon coat glaze, my dragon coat, my dragonfly top coat glaze. Okay, so we're gonna apply some right to our palette. I'm gonna take my one inch brush and I'm gonna apply this top coat to the entirety of my pumpkin. And it's just like regular acrylic paint. Um, you just brush it right on and it brushes on beautifully. And I'm going to apply it to the whole thing. If you want to at home, you can just apply it to certain little details, um, but it's totally up to you. I like my pumpkin to stand out amongst my background, so I'm going to apply it to my whole pumpkin. The stem and all. Okay, and then I'm going to apply it to my corners. So just kind of loosely like this. Yeah, dragonfly glaze is really cool, guys. If you haven't really seen it before or if you've not worked with it before, it's like super shifty. It's like, yeah, so. it's like it's a beautiful iridescent top coat. And I hope that I, now that we have this um, overhead camera, since on this dry one, you can see that iridescence. 
and how beautiful it is. And so, I, like I said in the beginning, there's a bunch of different um, colors and varieties of the dragonfly glaze. So this kind of has like pink and I mean pink, blue overtones. There's one that have a little bit greener overtones. There's one that have pinker overtones. So I really suggest you guys that if you um, love this, then you should definitely go to Michael's, buy a bottle and try it out on some projects at home. And just a reminder, yeah. this is a, the red, violet, blue color. And you can use it over like um, a dark base coat or a light base coat, and you totally get a different effect depending on which one. But it's you definitely yeah. want to paint it over something. It is a, like Emma said, it's a top coat more so than a paint in and of itself. But it's really pretty neat. Yeah. All right, you guys. So since our painting is coming to a close, I broke out my little liner brush and I dipped it into my navy and we're gonna go ahead and make sure you guys tonight that you sign your painting. And then you're done. So I wanna thank you guys all so much for tuning along with me tonight and for painting Floral Fright along with me. I hope you guys had fun. I hope that you um, got a little bit more relaxed uh, and I hope you learned something. Like I said, definitely go check out our Let's Paint with Plaid group on Facebook. A lot of wonderful people um, that all share the love of painting, all different skill levels. It's a great place to be. And I wanna give you guys a little sneak peek of what um, we are painting next week on our Michael's Let's Paint Live. Yeah, we wanna make sure to show that. This is fun. <laughs> Okay, so next week, Chris Williams is painting this really, really cute um, little gingerbread couple apron, um, starting the holiday season a little bit early, which I love. So definitely tune into that. Um, Chris is a wonderful teacher and she gives lots of great tips and tricks. So make sure to tune in for that. I wanna thank you guys again. And I think that's it, right, John? I think that is all. So yes, if you, uh, Want to be prepared for next week. Make sure you get yourself an apron to paint on. Um, and we would love to see your work. So I know that Ash had posted the hashtags, but um, hashtag plaid crafts, hashtag make it with Michaels, hashtag Michaels classes. I think those are right. And then also in our let's paint with, oh, there she's done it again. Perfect. And then that let's paint with plaid Facebook group. If you put your painting in there, we'd love to see that as well. So uh, it's been a lot of fun. So thank you, Emma. Thank you, Ash. And thank you, everybody, for joining. Bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs>